The Bermondsey by-election of the 24th of February, 1983, was brought about by the resignation of Robert Joseph Mellish on the 1st of November, 1982. In a constituency of 51,906 electors, the turnout was 57.7%. Standing to become the Member of Parliament for Bermondsey were two Communist candidates Fran Eden, Revolutionary Communist, 38 votes, 0.1% Robert Gordon, Communist, 50 votes, 0.2% One Independent Conservative and four far-right candidates Alan Baker, United Democratic Party 15 votes, 0.1%. Anne King, National Labour Party, 25 votes, 0.1%. Michael Kuhlemans, New Britain, 62 votes, 0.2%. Dowager Lady Birdwood, Independent Patriot, 69 votes, 0.2%. James Smith, National Front, 425 votes, 1.4 percent. Three independent Labour candidates. Esmond Bevan, independent Labour. Eight votes, zero percent. Barry Giddings, independent Labour. 50 votes, 0.2 percent. John O'Grady, real Bermondsey Labour. 2,243 votes, 7.6%. Three small-scale fringe parties. David Wedgwood, Anti-Common Market and Free Trade, 15 votes, 0.1%. George Hanna, Ecology, 45 votes, 0.2%. David Such, Monster Raving Looney, 97 votes, 0.3 percent. One official conservative candidate, Robert Hughes, 1,631 votes, 5.5 percent. A change of minus 19.4 percent. One official Labour candidate, Peter Tatchell. 7,698 votes, 26.1%, a change of minus 37.5%. And one Liberal candidate, campaigning as part of the Liberal SDP alliance, precursor to the Liberal Democrats, Simon Hughes. 17,017 votes, 57.7%. A change of plus 50.9%. The swing from Labour to Liberal was 44.2%. Liberal gain from Labour.
Simon Heaps, you are home, 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 homosexual. Will tell you then what, sorry? Buck Force. Oh, okay. Which was a group of people in the funk music who supported Tony Ben. <laughs> they also supported me. Nice. It's quite a self explanatory title, isn't it? <laughs> From our research, we heard about um, and found the lyrics of uh, a, a song that John O'Grady sang while campaigning, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever experience it or hear it directly yourself, or was it along the grapevine, sort of? Uh, no, it definitely happened that um, some of my canvases witnessed it, some of the press witnessed it, mm. but I, I was elsewhere in the campaign, so I never heard myself. Family, 
my neighbors and colleagues were subjected to over a year of sustained press harassment. Records of phone calls made by me. The police showed me transcripts of messages left on my voicemail. I was shown a schedule of call data. My mobile number. My account number. The password for my mobile phone account. Everything needed to listen to my voicemail messages at will. But the papers did not stop there. I have 
have been spent. Another bullet. How can Fleet Street get away with such exaggeration? And even fabrication
a political potential. we're hoping to find in in this piece in many ways that we can. Freedom, equality, homosexuality. Freedom, equality, homosexuality. Freedom, equality,
could not be a barrier to public life in modern Britain. Oh, 
On the 9th of June, 1983, just four months after the by election, a UK general election was held. For this election, the constituency of Bermondsey was abolished. Standing to become the Member of Parliament for the new constituency of Southwark and Bermondsey were Three far right candidates. Susan McKenzie, Nationalist Party. 50 votes. 
Kevin Mason, New Britain, 154 votes, 0.5%. James Sneath, National Front, 474 votes, 1.4%. One Communist Candidate, Afzal Farag, Revolutionary Communist, 54 votes, 0.2%. One independent candidate, Thomas Keane, 50 votes, 0.2%. One conservative candidate, Robert Hughes, 4,481 votes, 13%. One Labour candidate, John Tilley, 12,021 votes. 34.9% and one liberal candidate Simon Hughes 17,185 votes 49.9% new seat Liberal win. interruption to the ending in fact but what an absolutely beautiful piece of work oh hello bob um wonderful oh. back as well and yes we've got a full house ah oh, it's stunning each time i see this i like it more and more that was my <laughs> fourth time wasn't it and yeah I, there's so much to talk about there's there's 
so much to ask um audience if you want to ask just type question in big letters in the chat and then what you want to ask and i will relay it back to the team um let's start with the question from vanessa crawford thank you so much for bringing this awful time to a 2023 audience I would love this to go into schools while it still can. <laughs> what are your hopes, plans for the opera now? P.S. I love the surtitles, the font too. Well, thank you so much, Gareth, for doing it. You did a massive edit on our live capture of the performance. Not Gareth, I mean, um, Bob. <laughs> and that was a real kindness. It was a really good thing to do, I think. It really, really... Um, enhances the whole experience of watching it online but um anyway plans to go into schools plans for anything plans to change yeah well i mean just on the on those sort of titles i think um yeah it was a really important part of the piece for us that the, the well the video generally but particularly just having sort of titles having or subtitles having um but yeah, being being able to understand the text as it as it's sung and and really being able to read it and uh, alongside, I think it's a really really important part of opera. And I, it's what it's a shame when fringe opera isn't able to make that happen because I think it's a huge accessibility question. Um, and so yeah, it was a really important part of the piece for us, and, and also to have the references for all the text. All the text comes from verbatim sources, newspapers, articles, and so on. So that, so that was a really important part of it for us. But yeah, just coming coming back to that question. Um, we definitely want to want it to have a future. We definitely want to put it on again. We're looking uh, both at kind of like fringe festivals, possibly the question of Edinburgh next summer. Um, we would also love to love it to go to bigger houses, festivals, and so on. Um, so that's the kind of next stage of of production. We haven't thought about schools actually. I mean, um, that's a really interesting. Um, yeah, a really interesting suggestion that. Um, I think I think definitely there's a, there's a lot of there's a real educational aspect of I mean is it, is it educational for the for for audiences even if they're not as school kids, um and and yeah I mean we we would love to we would love to take it into education settings absolutely yeah I mean, there's so much to talk about this, uh, that's all gone into Vanessa's question really yeah. I mean it it's worth yeah. telling the audience a little bit about the genesis of the piece I mean it was already alive in you in we first talked about it in 2019 or possibly even 18 actually um when it was a very very different world and you had a very very different plan for it we were talking about site specific community project in the space where it actually happened and that's that's not so far away from getting into a school it, but do it, you think the piece has meandered into its own other place now or do you think that's also a possibility i mean in a way I, I wouldn't say you don't change anything because you've got there it's perfect but but what do you feel um, and you tell us gareth what do you feel because you've been you're in nagasaki now aren't you so we haven't seen you for i, I said i haven't seen you since 2019 when we were talking about this uh, how is it to see it now it's it is quite i mean i'm not there but for the for the premiere um even though it is quite wonderful in japan currently um it would it's um been a piece that as you rightly say has lived with rob and i for quite a long time now and one that has i think a very uh big emotional resonance for the two of us to bringing it to fruition and to bring it to fruition in this way um in terms of the development of the piece um, I think you're right, but the, it has changed quite significantly. And I think the main impetus for a lot of those changes for us, the first iteration of this piece, we had um, some workshops at Snape Maltings in Alderborough and at Lord Music Theatre in Belgium. And at that time, we were sort of privileging the historical information first and foremost. We are really putting that at the centre and the whole wealth of that historical information in, in essentially sort of at times overwhelming way. And as we were sort of working on it and keeping bringing, exploring it and thinking about it, we kind of realized that more than anything, we wanted to connect with 
Peter and Simon in an emotional sense, as characters, as people within this sort of political circumstance, within the sort of swirl of information and history, and to find those emotional resonances and connections and separations between them, both in the moment of the campaign and in the 40 years afterwards. So I think in many ways, well, that took, you know, it's meandered definitely through the years as we've been thinking about it. I'm really happy with that final version, which has the... Um, um has the historical detail is still there has the information you know we thought a lot about the word document in documentary as part of video design as part of um libretto construction but really tries to push through to and thinking about that personal element as well alongside and in tandem with the political and the historical um so that's been yeah one of our and it's it isn't i really uh thank you Vanessa, for that question as well about schools because i think yeah there is an element of this that is an important education um that is important to you know the we like to think that things have changed and in many ways in a legal situation they uh, for lgbt people they have massively changed but even things like um broadcasting about this opera on uh, twitter and Peter was has been wonderfully supportive and you know regularly shared he came to the performance where really promoted it but the kind of um, homophobic backlash even promoting this opera was getting on Twitter today was uh, absurd it sort of really does make it does show how things haven't changed much of the proceeding and how Peter actually is in so many ways a focal point for a lot of that homophobic abuse. Oh, she must be exhausted because <laughs> it's like 40 years ago. I mean, that is yeah, an observation and to, that you need to answer. Well, maybe, maybe it is interesting to answer it. Um, the day before yesterday, we had our first watch party for Fierce Love, and that was, I mean, Jim himself and is a fairly iconic figure from the 90s and the time of... Um, like HIV really messing up our lives and you know he and I lots of people involved really remember that but then he was talking about how there were many younger people in the cast who weren't even born then um and we were talking 91 and still like it was a really big deal and really resonated for them to um experience that and here we are now and you two I assume can't possibly have been born in 1980. <laughs> yeah, I remember it very well. And it's kind of, for me, it's part of now. And um, I'd love to know from each of you what it is to you, both how you stumbled across it and um, really what it is about that moment. You kind of talked about how it's like now, but what is, what is it about the moment that really matters? Because another observation is that I just absolutely loved as Vanessa said that the font of the surtitles and the way it's so Amstradian the kind of crude pre-matrix visuals of Sasha's um, video absolutely brilliant and also Bob the sounds that we hear like when it starts I think oh fantastic I'm in this kind of 80s synth world and actually each time I come back to it it gets more and more exciting and what I hear because I'm beginning to go oh he's got that from there and uh, um, yeah no I, I mean definitely the 80s aesthetic I mean it's something we wanted to lean into without it becoming parody and so some you know like the 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 aesthetic of the video and, and the aesthetic of some of the electronic sounds where it was that was intentional that was you know we wanted to sort of pay homage to 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 the aesthetic of, of that period without it feeling like it's you know like we're over egging it but yeah i mean i definitely think um well i think generally for queer people it's important to be celebrating and to be learning about our own history you know there's this real idea for me anyway of um inheritance it's like you know queer people have i mean of course we, everyone has their biological family but queer people have the, the, the chosen family the community and it's really important as well <laughs> relatively young i mean i you know don't feel that young anymore but re relatively young queer person i think it's it's really important and actually it's always been important to me 
to be learning from well firstly just learning from elders but then learning from our own history you know Le learning about the things that happened in the past learning about um the struggles uh and also celebrating the ce celebrating the victories and the joy and the the queer people have always been here and we always will be here and we've we ha kind of have this inheritance um and so i feel like i mean this isn't the first piece of mine that's um celebrated kind of queer heritage in that way gareth and i made a piece in 2018 called anthems for queer youth which was a kind of immersive song cycle um yeah about it was basically settings of queer love letters from um the past hundred years including sort of tumblr posts from 2016 and then um you know virginia wolf and so on um so so that's that's what it is for me um i don't know how you feel gareth I think very similarly. I think why this this event in particular is always stuck in my head um, is because it always feels in many ways like um, the moment the genies let out the bottle in a way, in the sense that the first time an openly gay candidate is running, the first time that that isn't something hidden, you know, there were LGBT and queer MPs beforehand, sure, but it was never part of the 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 public and political persona it was always a hidden private thing and in this situation we've got a candidate who is openly gay and is not trying to hide it as well as a candidate who is trying to hide it so it sort of has felt like a moment where two uh notions of how the public and the private surrounding and and, you know, Peter obviously representing a very modern, forward-looking things about the unapologetic, openly gay man. And Simon, in many ways, you know, harking back to the more historical sense, you keep it private, you keep it hidden, but it's still there. But it's not, it's, it's, it's not part of your public kind of persona. And for me, this one event really crystallizes it. It really sort of puts that as a sort of moment in history it's in it, this piece is in many ways a period piece in what we're talking about and how part of the documentary process we wanted to honor was not just the documents of the time but also the style of the time you know the video design the synths there's also echoing that that's part of the documentary process for us and i think that's why for me this event in particular I'd been, I've been think, I've always been interested in British politics, and then as my, you know, developing queerness was sort of emerging, it's a very kind of focal point for me as this, this, this crisis point, this crutch point, this turning point where the two are very much deeply, deeply interconnected, and um, so it's that sort of that, and I think it is that thing of I am sad that it still has resonance today. And I think that's an important part of its education. I think, yes, it's a period piece. Yes, in many ways, it's the first piece. Yes, we're teaching about our history and having that educational side. But it's also about the audience realizing as they're engaging in it that actually it's not that different. That while there are many areas we have made great strides forward, there are areas which are still exactly the same. I mean, you know, Simon Hughes targeted probably even primarily because of his closetedness by the phone hacking scandal, all these sort of things, they they repeat, they reoccur. Um, and we need to be educated, we need to know about them, to see them, to hear about them, to know how to break those cycles. That's the, the hope anyway. Um, and that's, um, yeah, what the piece has really meant to me is both the period of it, the importance of this one moment, and then that recognition and engagement of where we are now yeah it's it's so fascinating because there's i mean to me that who is somebody just about coming to terms with my own queerness at that moment um there's a whole other layer to it which was hiv so just at the point that you think oh and and it was a harder time because there were great inequalities of um the age of consent and uh, no equal marriage at all um so you're like a kind of way getting so far up the shore and then you get knocked back again and 
uh, that this was exactly the moment that HIV was beginning to be connected with the gay men and adverts on television going, don't die of ignorance and tombstones. And the whole thing was a very frightening, isolating moment. So in a way, we owe Peter a huge amount for for being there and talking about it because most of us were more like Simon Hughes and just kind of trying to go, okay, I'll just get on with something else and bury that under the carpet. Um, it is such a powerful work. It is and the other thing as you were talking, Gareth, I was thinking is how I find myself, and I'm probably parroting somebody else, and I think by and large this is true, um, feel that opera is the arena for emotion and not really intellectual ideas. Whereas um, play is a really where you transact like thoughts and intricate processes and things. But actually, you've kind of smashed through that here because, um, well, maybe it's a question about what the work actually is. But in, in what you were saying, Gareth, you're exactly right that 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 you the pair of you and with your music, Bob, are hitting some great emotional resonance in the middle of a lot of numbers and ideas and stats and thoughts and uh, uh, and political wrangling and the stuff we've just been talking about so you're very much to be congratulated but slightly over time um and i haven't passed on to you tamsin trevorton jones's question agree about the subtitles very powerful very impressive with an election forthcoming don't you think the current cohort of politicians could do with being reminded of Bermondsey 1983 a performance at the house of commons perhaps is that like a a, a sanctioned performance that you know can you put it on a parliament or do we just kind of go you know direct <laughs> style yeah, like, why don't you why don't you team up with led by donkeys and yeah uh, exactly exactly get, <laughs> get it projected on the side of uh of the palace of westminster on the side of parliament yeah that would be good <laughs> um it's funny in a way as well because well i say funny more sad but you know i feel that there are definitely some politicians who absolutely could be do with being reminded of this um you know um well actually Kenny also, comes to mind but um actually, whether that, that would actually change their opinion or not is the other question we had one of the uh a lib dem councillor who is apparently standing to become the mp in bermondsey in the next election who came along to the performance and kind of said hi afterwards and she said you know well like lots lots of lots to think about lots lots to chew on and i was like oh okay that's kind of you know that's a that's a pat on the back that's you know getting the politician to think about think about stuff you know that's uh oh yeah it's definitely true well we could talk for hours but we ourselves are a bit at risk of crashing into the next watch sure. party so we need to go and yeah do bits and pieces but i've got to thank you enormously and congratulate you even more hugely for a brilliant show and can't wait to see where it happens thank you so much thank you thank you and thanks for uh, thank you so up. much thanks for hosting us and having us here and for everyone That's coming to watch as well it's um yeah. missing the Okay. The original. Yeah.